Each year, the Cumberland County Historical Society publishes an annual journal. Uh, that process is nearing completion. You should be receiving it soon. The second major project will be, a, each year is usually a book. Uh, last year, the book was on the Two Mile House. This year, the book uh, was put together by a committee and it's called Remembering Lost Cumberland County, Pennsylvania. The committee was headed up by Mary Lou Shaman with Richard Tritt, Kara Curtis, Randy Watts, Beverly Bone and myself uh, joining that committee. We each selected an area of the county to concentrate on for our research and the intent was to publish a book, mainly photographs of places in the county that no longer exist. Uh, we were very fortunate to have three underwriters step, step up to support the cost of this book. They are Ann Kramer Hoffer, Judge Kevin Hess, and Randy and Laura Watts. Uh, their support is greatly appreciated. I also need to indicate that um, we were assisted, the, the, those of us on the committee, by the smaller historical societies scattered across the county. I know Mary Lou worked with both uh, Shivensburg and Newville Historical Societies. Um, we were fortunate to have Beverly Bone on the committee to get assistance from Mechanicsburg uh, Museum uh, Association. Uh, and the work that I did on the East Shore was supported by the New Cumberland Library, Shiremanstown Historical Society, the West Shore Historical Society, and the uh, East Pennsboro Historical Society. So thank you for uh, joining us today. I'd like to share a little bit about the process of, of the book and what it includes. Uh, hopefully that will entice you to, uh, to find out about the book. It will be for sale in our bookshop, hopefully by the end of November at the latest, uh, the printers have indicated we should have it uh, by the beginning of December. Uh, the right side of the screen shows the cover of the book uh, as it will appear. On the left side uh, was, is a photo that was taken actually as we were doing the research and it shows a site in West Pennsboro Township that was being dismantled. Losses occur for a variety of reasons. They can be fires or floods, encroaching suburbia, urbanization, changing technology, industrialization, and other efforts of, of building uh, new structures in the place of old. Um, and the book will be talking about buildings, other structures, sites in the, in the county, bridges, homes, mansions, and estates. We worked from west to east, and the book is presented in that way, and we hopefully will be sharing with you something from almost every municipality. Uh, there were a couple that we weren't able to find anything, but every town, village, uh, township is uh, organized throughout the book and shows you some of the, the places that no longer exist. We start with Shippensburg. Many of you will be familiar with, on the west end of the town of the Bullseye. Um, it was referred to as the Old Indian Fort. That actually isn't correct. They have located the site of the fort on the east end of town, but that hill, that rocky outcropping is still there. And at the time this photo was taken, there was a school up there. Uh, the building on the right would be at the corner of uh, King and Earl Streets. There's a restaurant there now, but this large German house hotel was located there at one time. This shows a, a, one of the old taverns in Shippensburg while it's being deconstructed and to the left of the slide, uh, you'll see the Widow Piper's Tavern, one of the places in Schumannsburg that has been maintained. And on the right is a school that was located in Cleversburg. If you're familiar with the Walnut Bottom area, the church on the left was the Rehoboth Church. The cemetery is still there, but this church was taken down a number of years ago. And the slide on the right is of two schools, one room schools that were located in Oakville. Moving a little bit further east, we come to in uh, North Newton Township or South Newton Township, uh, what was the big pond iron furnace. Uh, the ruins of that site 
or that uh, structure are still there, uh, but in recent years, it has almost totally collapsed. And on the right, you see downtown Newville, the railroad station, uh, and the what was known as the new knitting mill. Another photo from Newville is the theater that was located there. I remember as a child when that building burned. This is Bergner's Bridge and Bergner's Mill. Uh, if you've ever been in the photo archives, this photo is actually hanging on the wall on the rear of the photo archives as you enter. West Pensboro Township was the location of a National Register property, the John McCulloch House. Being on a, a National Register or the County Register does not guarantee preservation of the property. And this one was lost a few years ago. To the right of that, you see Blue Hill School in the background with the emerging construction of what would become the Big Spring High School uh, in the foreground. That's not the Big Spring Middle School. Moving to Penn Township, you have the Centerville Academy, later replaced by Centerville School, and now there is a district court located on that side. site. On the right is Irish Town, uh, just outside of Huntsdale, an African-American community that was active in the uh, 19th century and early 20th centuries. In Huntsdale, we have the Weekly Mill. Uh, that site is now the parking lot for the uh, fish hatchery. And to the right, near the village of Hayes Grove, is the water tower that supplied the steam engines with water as they uh, needed to be refilled. Uh, one of my favorite parts about this photograph is the caboose, which is also a missing item, although we still have Railroads in Cumberland County, of course, uh, the caboose is no longer something that uh, you see uh, as you watch a, a railroad train pass. Moving to Cook Township, we have uh, what had been a farm, which then became the Pine Grove Furnace CCC camp. Those buildings were converted during World War II to the Pine Grove Furnace interrogation camp for German, mainly for German prisoners. And after the war, it became Camp Michaud. This is the bridge as we move toward uh, the Carlisle area. Um, as it was burning, it, this was visible from Cave Hill. And the building on the right is the Holly Pike Toll House. And you'll notice when you read the caption for the book, uh, it says that when the toll road came to an end in that area, the toll booth, which extended out toward the street, was chopped down. Uh, I questioned why that was done when the, uh, why it was written that way, but that is actually what they did. I guess they were so glad that the tolls were no longer being collected, they chopped down the toll booth. This is the Hatton Woolen Mill on the left, and the Claremont Estate, which eventually becomes these. This hotel. I mean, I have no photographs of that, but the springs that uh, made it possible um, are still located there. In Boiling Springs, you have the iron furnaces. This is the Catherine furnace. In the background, you can see uh, just off to the right, what is now the apartment house that's located in the old mill. And on the right of the slide is the uh, Boiling Springs Park merry-go-round. Gibbler's blacksmith shop is on the left. And what was then Boiling Springs High School is on the right. The new high school is located near this site today, uh, but this is what it looked back like back in the 19th century. Moving out to Mount Holly, the building on the right has been removed. The one on the left is still there, but these buildings like this uh, supported the iron industry, uh, workers, and uh, this, the one on the right, as I said, is, is gone. In downtown Mount Holly, uh, there were a number, a couple of mansions uh, located uh, on the north side of the town. Uh, this was the Charles Mullen Mansion. What you'll see there now are Sheets gas stores and 
other uh, small commercial businesses. A little further south in Mount Holly was the Central Hotel, shown on the left. The library is located there now. So sometimes when something is removed, something equally important and significant replaces it. On the right is the Mount Holly Park, with, uh, which was serviced by trolleys uh, and existed in, in various places in the county where the trolley was the reason that the park existed. Moving into Carlisle proper, you have the old courthouse, I'm, excuse me, the old post office, which uh, is now an extension, the, the, the site is now an extension of the UCC church. On the right is the noble barn. And probably two of the most iconic structures that have been lost in Carlisle are the 1878 market house on the left and this Cumberland Valley Railroad station on the right. Carlisle Hospital, shown near the time that it was uh, torn down, is on the left, and the hospital in 1916 as it appeared when it was constructed. Allison Methodist Church is on the left. It burned in the 1950s. And the structure on the right is the Second Presbyterian Church, which was taken down when the church moved to the edge of Carlisle. Salvation Army is now located on that site. Photo on the left shows the last train coming through High, School, High Street in Carlisle and the building with the arch is the Orpheum Theater. Um, that site now is part of the parking lot for the Historical Society. The High Street trestle is shown on the right. Uh, that was how trains came into Carlisle uh, when it still ran through right through downtown. On the left is Cottage Hill, the Bosler Mansion, and on the right is Albion Point. Uh, the name of the, the use of the word point uh, is how the shopping center that's located there now got its name. The Wilson School is shown on the left and Carlisle High School on the right in the, with the Lamberton building that was taken down in the 1980s. On the left are photos, is a photo that we have of some of the of a fire that was located in Carlisle. We have a number of those types of photos in our collection. And on the right is the Carlisle Opera House, later the Strand Theater. Uh, and it eventually burned the uh, Todd Hall Part of the, an expansion of the Historical Society is located on part of that site. Many of you will remember the MJ Mall. Uh, it started rather small. This shows the extension of the mall when it was added on later in the 20th century. And the bottom picture is uh, near, located near the Turnpike Interchange, the original Turnpike Interchange, which has now uh, been closed, but this Grandview Hotel was located there. Mechanicsburg was known for manufacturing. That's where it got its name from the mechanics that worked there. And these are two photos of Mechanicsburg businesses that were located in the town. This is the Thomas Printing House as it appeared in the drawing and immediately following the fire that destroyed it. This is Franklin Hall in Mechanicsburg. The next, though not a photo, is something from the library archives, um, which shows the Schroeder coachworks in Mechanicsburg. Irving College President's home was uh, located in at two different sites, the earlier one and the one on the left, and the later one on the right. Probably one of the most emotional uh, losses that we encountered in the last 10 years was when we lost Bell Tavern. So here it is as it appeared before it was deconstructed and a wonderful photo of the interior of the staircase in that building. This is the Taylor Airport located along Route 11 and near where the airport was located was the Rainbow Roller Rink. Willow Mill Park 
It was located, uh, the park is still there, but the uh, amusements are, are no longer part of it. And Williams Grove Park, though that park also still exists, the, the features of the park have been closed uh, and this dining facility on the lake is also gone. Moving a little further east, you come to the Silver Spring Market and the Silver Spring Livestock Market. Some of you may remember that as an antique market. And immediately behind that was the Silver Spring Speedway. Moving further east, you have Campbell High School on the left and Le Moyne High School on the right. Le Moyne was originally known as Bridgeport, therefore this hotel near the river uh, was called the Bridgeport Hotel. New Cumberland, this was a blacksmith shop that was located there. Also in New, New Cumberland was their railroad station and in Shireman's Town, the Shireman's Town Depot. This is on the top left is a New Cumberland carriage works. And on the bottom in Camp Hill, the Slugs Roost restaurant and gas station. Moving into East Pennsboro Township, you have the Harrisburg Nail Works in uh, West Fairview and the Enola Yard. Uh, of course, the yard is still there, but the roundhouse located to the left of the picture and the brick office building uh, toward the center have been removed. In Somerdale, there was a trolley that ran there to the park that was located there. And this is the Somerdale Dance Pavilion. Uh, traveling circuses are an event that occurred frequently in Cumberland County. This is one that took place in Lemoyne uh, with the elephant helping to raise the, uh, the tent. This is Lemoyne Lutheran Church as it appeared before the fire, which is shown on the right. This is the Cumberland, a drawing of the Cumberland Valley Railroad Bridge over the Susquehanna and a picture of two young girls standing at the entrance, entrance to Orr's Bridge. And the final slide is uh, the steamboat landing in New Cumberland uh, that shows the, the use of ferries before bridges became prevalent across the Susquehanna. The Camelback Bridge in the final photo uh, is in the background on the left. Uh, the building in the foreground is the toll house. Uh, this picture was taken during the flood of 1902, uh, which damaged Camelback Bridge and it was eventually removed and replaced by the Market Street Bridge. So I hope that gives you a taste of what our new publication will be like. And I look forward to uh, seeing many of you coming in to, to purchase it. I hope you all enjoy it. Thank you very much.